Hi everyone and welcome to Family Origami. My name is Kelly Kraft and I'm Program Manager and our Noogie Land Coordinator at Gilda's Club Quad Cities. Um, I'm glad that you're all here and you're home and safe and I want us to learn some origami projects today. Um, so I've got a couple of projects set out. We're going to first make an origami jumping frog, which is pretty cool because they actually jump. And then we'll make the tried and true favorite, the origami crane. So first off, I wanna talk about origami paper. Right now we're all at home. Um, we're not going out as much as we were before. And so we're, we may not have origami paper at home. You can just buy it on Amazon, Michaels, probably Walmart and Target have it. Um, but if you don't have any at home, this is the regular orig origami paper. Sometimes it's uh, the same color on both sides. Sometimes it's one color on one side or print or whatever and white on the other side. Um, and it's usually thinner paper. And that's what you'll see for traditional origami paper. But if you don't have any, we can make some out of regular printer paper. So our first, um, our first project, the frog, we're going to use regular printer paper, but for the crane in most origami projects, you need origami paper, which is square. So the big difference between this and this is this is a rectangle and this is a square. So we need perfectly square paper. So you can either get origami paper or you can make it. So if you just have regular paper, the way to make origami paper is one way you can just measure it, you know, six by six or whatever size. You can make a bigger crane, you can make a smaller crane, but the smaller they get, usually the harder it is. But if you want the easiest way to make origami paper out of your regular printer paper, is you have it in front of you and fold it so this side meets this side. And so you kind of get this shape. And then this extra here, all you need is this part, this extra here you can cut off. And so what you are left with at that point is a nice square piece of paper. And if you don't like wasting anything, um, this is also the perfect size for a bookmark and you can decorate that. And the nice thing about using regular white printer paper too is that you can decorate it. You can do all kinds of stuff on one side. You can use markers or colored pencils or just pen um, and make it look really neat. Um, and then the other side will be the inside of the crane. So you don't usually need that side. Um, but today we're gonna start with our origami frog. So for that one, you need a regular piece of paper. If you want a smaller frog, so this a whole piece of paper makes one about this size. And I want it bigger. I want a, a big frog so you guys can see it at home. Um, but if you want a smaller frog, you can cut a piece of paper in half and have it be a smaller frog. Um, so the first thing you'll do is put your piece of paper out in front of you. And then you will fold it lengthwise or hot dog style as we all learned as some of us learned in school. So one big thing with origami is you always want really good creases. So try to get that as close as you can. And then you always want really good creases. So you can use your fingernail to crease. You can use a pen cap or um, the clip of a pen to crease. I like to use pens. And then you'll open that up. And so you kind of see it's like this that creases on the bottom. And then you'll take your corner and have it just like we did with making origami paper. You're going to have this top end edge meet the side edge. And again, those nice good creases. You can use your fingernail, whatever. But you want real good creases. And then open that back up. And then you'll do that on the other side. So in the middle, it kind of looks like this before you open it back up. All right, so open that back up. And so you have kind of your point on the bottom here. I want you to flip it over. So your point here is up. And so I want you to flatten it out and then you'll take the top 
and fold it down to where these creases start here. Okay, so it'll look a little bit like this. Little, little, it'll look like this. So you've got some extra down here. And then open that back up. And so it should be that crease that you just made should be up toward your face. And then I want you to push down on the middle so the edges pop up. And then you'll take these little edges, these ones here, and you'll pull them toward you and meet the table. And then you'll kind of push this out and you get it into like this kind of arrow shape. And this is going to be your frog's nose. So with this part toward you, just crease that real good. All right, so now we're going to make our frog's feet. So this is where we are right now. We've got these kind of little flaps here and we're going to make our frog's feet. So to do that, we're going to take these corners and take this corner and put it toward his nose. So like this. So it looks like this, we've got this flap here. And then do that on the other side. You'll hear that all the time throughout these two projects. It's usually what you do on one side, you do on the other side. And so now we've kind of got a diamond up here, okay? And then we're going to make, those are kind of his legs, we're gonna make his feet now. So to do that, we're going to take the tip of this and fold it back down so that it matches this corner here. And then do that on the other side, like this. All right, so you want his feet up and then we are going to fold this edge into the center. So it looks like this. And then we'll do that on the other side. So now our frog looks like this. So the next step, once we've got this, really good creases here like normal, we're going to fold this part up. So you want the crease to be where his body kind of stops here and you want that to lead your fold. And so fold that up, crease it good. And now we're going to make his legs. So this is going to kind of accordion. So let me find, we're going to turn this into these legs. So we're just kind of going to accordion his legs here. So you want to maybe fold it twice. So fold once about a third of the way and then fold again so that it's going toward you. So you've kind of got it like this. We'll give you a minute to get there. And then once you've got that, that's your whole frog. You can set him down and you can kind of like make him jump and you can decorate your frog however you want. Um, and you can also use construction paper or other, um, you know, neon papers, whatever you find at the store, or have laying around the house. Um, old sheet music looks really cool um, and things like that. So if you want to personalize your frog, you can. So next we're going to go to our tried and true uh, origami crane. So for that, we want origami paper or just a square piece of paper. I'm going to, as we go, um, mark all of the folds that I do so that you can see them a little bit better. You don't necessarily have to do this. This is just going to make it so you can see a little bit better at home. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to bring this corner to this corner. And oh, and for your origami paper, if you're using actual origami paper where it's like this is yellow on one side and white on the other side, you want your good side down. Increase it really good. So we make a nice big triangle here. 
And so I am going to draw in our creases so that you can see them better. And even more than with the frog, we wanna make sure we're doing really good creases. So if you open it back up, you've got this crease in the center here, and then we'll do the other corner to the other corner. So we're making an X. Really good creases. And I'm going to mark that crease so you can see it at home a little better. now you have an X. So now I want you to flip it over so your other side is up and you're going to make rectangles. So one side over to the other side. Nice good crease like this. Open it back up and I'm going to mark that crease. You don't have to necessarily do that. I'm just hoping to make it a little bit easier to follow me, follow along with me. And open it up and the other way. So opposite side to opposite side. Nice good creases are always going to help. They're going to make all the folding a lot easier. All right, so you've got your boxes here. Looks like your squares. You're gonna leave it that side up with, with it as a diamond toward you. So you're going to have, you put your hand on the diamond closest to you. So on your view, it'll look like this. And you're putting your hand right here, which kind of makes this the rest of it pop up. And that's good, you're gonna use that. So from your view, I want you to take these corners and bring them down to the tip at the bottom. And then you can push down on the top and it becomes a little diamond or a little square. So I'm gonna walk you through that part again because that's a little weird. I'm gonna do it from my perspective. So I'm pushing down here. I'm taking these corners, bringing them down to the tip and then pushing down and you get a little square or diamond. So this is really important. As we're working with this, I want you to make sure that all these flaps are toward you when you're working on the table. So there's one point here, and then there are a bunch of flaps down here. I want the flaps toward you. If you do it the other way, you're not going to get a crane. Um, and so the next step, once you've got this little diamond in front of you, is you're going to make what I call kind of a kite. Um, so you're going to bring this edge here, just the first flap. There's a flap underneath. You don't, you leave that one alone. You want to bring this edge and meet it, um, have it meet the middle, that middle crease or line. So I'll do one fold and I'll show you what that looks like. So it looks like this. And then we do it on the other side. Nice, good creases. And then I want you to take this, it looks like a little triangle here, and I want you to fold it down right where this edge is, which I'm actually going to draw on so you can see it a little better. So where this edge is, that's where I want you to crease it. So just crease it down. Really good crease for that one. That's an important one. And then fold it back up. And now I want you to flip it over and make your kite on the other side. So we're going to bring this in like this. Really good creases. So it looks like this now. And then we want to do it on this side. So we're really making it look like a kite. So 
So now it looks like this. So where we had this fold, I want that pointed up and I want you to put it down on the, on the table. So make sure that's still a good crease and open it back up. And then I want you to open up the whole thing just like this. So you've got that little, that little diamond in front of you again. So now I want you to take just this top piece of paper, this top little flap, and we're going to make what I think looks like a, a little baby bird's mouth when a baby bird is asking his mom for, um, for food and open it up. So we're leaving this triangle flat. That's why that, um, that was so important. So we want to open it up. See, it looks kind of like a little baby bird's mouth here and push it all the way down and you make a nice long diamond out of it. So I'm gonna walk you through that part again because this is one of the harder parts for me. So you open it up and as you open, these flaps kind of start coming into the center. You can use that, that's good. So push it all the way out and just let it come together and guide it into a nice long diamond and make a nice, nice and flat. So like this. All right. And so we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. So that long diamond down toward the table and that little, uh, that little triangle, which I'm going to draw on this side now, that little triangle, I want you to fold down again, but on this side now, crease it real well. That's that important crease we were talking about and then fold it back up. All right, now we're going to do the same thing we did on the other side to make that little baby bird mouth. So we're going to open it up, just the top little sheet here. Open it up. And make a nice long diamond out of it. This part takes a little bit of practice. If it doesn't look how you hope the first time, that's okay. It didn't for me either. <laughs> All right, so now we have this nice long diamond. So we have, you see at the top it's together and at the bottom there's separation. We want that bottom separation part toward ourselves on the table. So now we're going to take this edge. And again, there's two flaps just like there were before. This edge and have this edge meet the middle. So I'll do one fold and then I'll show you what that looks like. Draw in that crease. So it looks like this. So it was like this and now it's like this. So we'll do that on the other side. So now it looks like this. So it was like this and now it's like this. And then so we'll flip it all over and do that on the other side. It's the same thing, bring that edge to the middle. So it looks like this and then on the other side. So now we've got this shape. All right, so we've got this wide part at the top, that's good. We've got this down here and they're still separated. That's exactly what you wanna see. So now we're going to open it up. We're gonna kind of invert it. So you see how we have the, the four pieces here. We're gonna put our fingers in between the, the pieces and invert it. So we get kind of this, what I call like a dog or wolf's head shape like this. So I'll show that again. When you pick it up, it looks like this. We've got our little flaps down here and we're gonna open it up. And we've still got two pieces on each side. So both sides should look like this little kind of wolf's head. All right, so this is going to be making our head and our tail. So each of these little wolf head parts, I want you to fold up. So they connect down here and that's where, that's where you'll crease it, where it connects to the rest of the body. Fold it up and crease it really good. And then we'll do that on the other side. So fold it up 
and increase it really good. All right, so now we're going to invert it back and make our wings. So we want to put our fingers in between and open it up like a book again. So these are going to make our wings. So hold it down at the bottom, take just this top little flap and fold it down. See how this, you've got this little triangle? That's going to be the body of your crane. And this is a wing, just like this. And then so do that on the other side. You've got another wing over here. Flip it down and crease it really good. All right, so you can kind of bring those up a little bit and hold on to the body. So now you've got two wings and this is going to be our head and our tail. So for the tail, you can just kind of hold it over to this side and pull this out a little bit and then recrease it at the bottom, just kind of wherever feels right. And then for the head, we hold on to this side, just pull it out a little bit and recrease it at the bottom. And then for his head, you want to be about a third of the way down from the tip. Bring it in and crease it. So there's your crane. And some people like to kind of fluff them out so they sit up a little bit better. And these are really neat. Um, everybody loves an origami crane and you can decorate them before, um, before you make it on your paper. A lot of times I like to write something, um, something meaningful that, you know, that I'm thinking of while I'm making this crane or if I'm making it for somebody, kind of a message that I'm thinking of um, for that person. Uh, but origami is a lot of fun. It's relaxing, something kids can do, something adults can do, um, something families can do together. So I just wanna thank everyone for joining us um, for some origami today. And you can see all of our virtual programs that Gildas Club Quad Cities has at our website, gildasclubqc.org. And thanks again, have a great day.